Jacinto Lila. You've profiled Gina Haspel for our website, France24.com. She could be the first female director of the CEA. Is that uh, welcome news for human rights and especially women's rights groups? Well, n certainly not for human rights uh, groups. In fact, she has been named in at least two lawsuits by human rights groups in two different countries. Uh, as you said, you know, this all uh, centers on the torture and extraordinary renditions. This happened immediately after the 9-11 attacks. Uh, at that time, Gina Haspel was in charge of a black site. These are secret CIA-run prisons in Thailand. And at the and at that stage in Thailand, there were two suspects, one of whom is Abu Zubaydah. He's very well known in intelligence circles. And these two suspects were brutally tortured in the secret uh, CIA uh, prison, which was run by Haspel. Now, there are some reports that say uh, that she was actually present at at least one of the, uh, these torture sessions. But in any case, she suddenly knew what was going on. And, you know, we're talking about waterboarding, slamming heads against... Uh, uh, walls. It must be said that at that time, this was not illegal. Congress only banned it in 2008. Uh, and Trump has now said that he's considering reviving this torture. But even more controversial in the case of Gina Haspel is her role in destroying videotapes of these uh, torture sessions, which were stored at the CIA station uh, in Thailand. Now, she's so controversial that back in 2013, when uh, the CIA was considering her to, to head their clandestine operations, uh, her, 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 she, she was actually blocked uh, by Senator Dianne Feinstein, uh, who actually worked the phones to try to block her uh, from taking over this position uh, because of her links to torture. Uh, but... Uh, you know, she, she's right now, she is not the CIA director. She's the deputy director. In order to be deputy director of the CIA, you don't have to face a congressional hearing. This will change, of course, because if she has to take on this new position, uh, she will have to publicly testify. We have not heard from her. And there is, there's going to be a lot of interest, especially from the human rights community, about what she has to say. Now, you've examined her links to an al-Qaeda suspect, Abu Zabaida. Tell us about it. Well, you know, this, this is a case that I've been following actually since 2002 when he was, uh, this is a Saudi national, he was captured in Pakistan. Uh, when he was captured, there were two FBI agents in Pakistan at that, at that point, and they were called in to initially question him. Uh, when they found him, he, he was uh, injured, very badly injured in this raid that was conducted by Pakistani and U.S. security forces. And one of the FBI agents who has since le left the agency and has written a book about it and has testified about it. So we have a lot of uh, information uh, in public record on this case. He testified that they were actually, they found him in such a poor condition that they helped him, you know, they put ice to his parched lips, they helped change his soiled clothes. And they established a rapport with Abu Zubaydah. And in the initial stages, based on kindness, Abu Zubaydah provided really valuable information. The intelligence was uh, extremely crucial. He named the chief planner of the 9-11 attacks, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. This was a man that nobody knew at that time. And he gave active intelligence that led to the, uh, the arrest of an al-Qaeda suspect in Chicago. But this valuable information stopped abruptly when he was moved to a secret black site in Thailand, which was being headed by Gina Haspel. And the, 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 you know, the, the discourse now in intelligence circle is actually torture does not work. You know, establishing a rapport is what actually gets through to, uh, to detainees. And that's how you really have uh, national security. That's how you maintain national security. So we, you're going to expect to hear a lot about the Abu Zubaydah case coming up in these congressional hearings, which we're all going to be avidly following. All right. Well, thank you very much for telling us all about that, Leela. And do check out Leela's piece on our website, france24.com. There you go.